Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartook-119. Last time on the Bard's podcast, our group left the confines of Haddonfield on their newly acquired ship. Two of the former slaves, Henrik and Tonya, accompanied the party and assisted the operation of the vessel. With supplies in hand, the party sailed off to return to Phoenix to take care of their unfinished business. We rejoin them as they get to know each other better. And so you see, that is why we are headed back to Phoenix, said Sister Elaine. We think it's important for you to understand what you're getting yourselves into. You know, we like to keep our cards face up, if you know what we mean. The pair listened intently and looked at each other once the cleric finished her explanation of the events unfolding. The rest of the adventurers watched to see the reaction of the former slaves and were surprised that they seemed nonplussed. <clears throat> well, began Tonia, I completely understand your motivation for returning and for your re desired result. I simply want to ride back to the area because A, I grew up there, and B, now that you've explained yourselves, I believe that your problem is my problem as well. You see, I was sold into slavery by some thugs, and I am looking for my own revenge. I am all for helping you, as you have already helped me immeasurably." The group nodded their approval and looked to Henrik for his answer. The man thought pensively for a few moments and considered his answer carefully. In a very measured tone, the sailor pointed out that he understood the motivation as well, but was uncertain if he could resolve anything. You see, the teachings of Dilo point out that compassion is an integral part of growth. I believe the Holy Tome points out that forgiveness is the better road through life. That being said, I will be happy to serve aboard the ship, but I do not believe I can assist you in your dealings once we arrive at Phoenix. I am sorry. The group was puzzled at his response and looked to Sister Elaine for hers, but noticed that she only looked down at her feet and appeared worried. Bulger cleared his throat to thwart the awkward silence and patted the man on the back. He pointed out that Henrik was a free man and allowed to choose his own path. Laddie, we will not force you to do anything you do not feel up to. We respect you and thank you for your honesty. You may serve aboard this ship for as long as we possess it without fear of servitude or ill will. Henrik shook his head and then Bulger's hand, thanking him for respecting his beliefs. The others chimed in agreement with the squat gnome, and it was decided that they would continue on with their original destination. As everyone moved around to tend to their duties, Henrik noticed Sister Elaine silently standing eyeing him. His expression was blank and she moved to sit across from him. She inquired as to how he knew about the teachings of Dilo so well and was shocked at his response. Well, prior to my slavery, Henrik started, I was studying theology and hoped to become a cleric of that deity. Some days, his preachings were the only thing that kept me going in the squalid box of captivity. Intrigued by his confession, the pair began to discuss the various teachings of the god and had a spirited discussion on interpretations while the other members of the group learned more about the secrets of the craft. Lady Irena examined a section of the boat that had contained a hidden compartment. Spotting it for the first time, Tonia went over and examined it as well. Looking in, the former slave asked why a hidden but empty compartment had drawn the mage's interest. The elf kept staring at the woodwork and began to tap at the edges as if investigating. Intrigued, Tonia watched and the mage whipped out a dagger and pried one edge up, revealing yet another hidden compartment. Whipping her blade back into the folds of her robe, Irena began to pull multiple items out of the secret stash and dumping them onto the deck. Several personal papers were recovered, along with a small bag of jewelry. Among the papers, a folded-up parchment, sealed in waxed, was discovered. 
Tonia emptied the bag and gasped audibly. The pair looked at her hand where an old bronze amulet was prominently displayed. Dumping the rest of the items on the deck, the former slave opened the amulet and a small sketch was revealed. Lady Irena looked into the woman's glassy eyes and immediately knew that the locket was hers and held great importance. She returned to the paper with a seal and then dropped it quickly and stepped back. Bulger noticed the exchange, moved over to the women and inquired what they had found. Looking down, he snatched up the parchment with a seal and began to open it, but stopped when the elf yelled. Do you not have any idea what you're holding? Put that down! She exclaimed loudly, causing the others to take notice. With the rest of the group wandering over, the curiosity was overwhelming. Fargus Stoutheart spotted the strange paper, and a hint of recognition crossed his face. Is that a, uh, Vonder, Valmar, Vortex? But the mage quickly corrected him. Volute Scroll. Yes, it is, she replied. Puzzled, the rest of the group began to inquire the significance of the item. Once everyone got quiet, Irena explained that the item was a powerful magic piece. She went on to detail that everyone knew that the scrolls were simply magical with spells written on them. But a Volute scroll, unlike other spell scrolls, will bring forth powerful magic that is immediate and unknown. The basic power of this item is the random effect it has. Once open, the magic is released, and whatever is written on that parchment will take effect instantly. It could unleash a ball of fire in the middle of us, or whisk us off to another plane, she warned. Bulger immediately suggested that they open it to see what it does, pointing out that they could find out now and use it again later. This statement was corrected by Fargus and confirmed by the elf that, once opened, the paper's effect occurred and it was gone forever. It was not reusable. Cabe Silvertongue took a step back at the revelation and suggested that Lady Irena hang on to the item as she found it. The group concurred and looked over the other recovered items. Henrik found nothing from his prior life, and Tonia held her amulet, amulet close to her chest. She got up and moved away from the group with a tear in her eye as memories began to flood back to her. The ship began to sail past a large landmass in the middle of the bay. The ranger looked down at Bulger and inquired what it was. High stone walls made a staggering impression on him. The gnome Ott nodded and pointed out that it was called Long Pick Island and was home to a prison. Inmates there are never released. It is home to the worst of the worst. I have several friends there. Dumbfounded by the response, Fargus stood speechless and slack-jawed. The large man's response caused Bulger to double over in laughter. I'm kidding, you big oaf. I don't have any friends there. But it is a notorious prison. It also marks the entrance to the sea. Bulger pointed out past the island and the human noticed water as far as the eye could see. Gasping at the expanse, Fargus realized how sheltered he had been. Henrik! yelled out Bulger. Turn us to the port, lest we head it to the land of the Minos. The former slave turned first mate gave Bulger a smart salute and quickly went down to change course. Minos? Land of the Minotaur people? queried Cabe Silvertongue. Bulger nodded without a word as the half-elf paled and stuttered out that he thought that was just a myth. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.